Hey everybody, welcome once again to another episode of Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley with you again. So, uh, glad to see some people are replying um, to the uh, videos, <laughs> at least a few of you are listening and enjoying this, because, uh, uh, you know, I do it for you. Um, <laughs> and, and I guess myself, because... I'm crazy and masochistic, apparently. So let's uh, talk about a couple of books. I kind of I, I got to this point where I realized, hey, I've got a couple of books and I've got some stuff to say. So let's go ahead and throw them out here. 1357, which is kind of the never-ending year uh, in the realms. One of them, because like in th starting around the 1350s, everything starts to get really compressed here. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, Halfling's Gem, which technically begins in uh, 1356, I think, and uh, the Legacy. Um, uh, books uh, 6 and 7 in the Legend of Drizzt series. So if you've been listening to this so far, you know that I'm not like a huge Drizzt fan and uh, Salvatore is kind of lukewarm for me. So a couple of odd little things about Salvatore. He really loves the image of somebody falling from a great height. At the end of uh, Streams of Silver, we have Brunor taking the plunge whilst riding a flaming dragon and he basically disappears into a gorge, we assume, to his fiery death never to be seen again, until, you know, chapter 5 of the Halfling's Gem went up. Oh, he's really okay, he just kind of got dinged up a little bit. No biggie. End of Halfling's Gem, we get Cadibri in a, uh, god, I can't even remember what it is, some other plane, like some demi-plane, or the plane of chaos, or blah 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 plane. Some other plane where it's all creepy and scary, and they're kind of like walking on a Mobius strip, and she has to, I can't even remember what she's jumping after. It's, uh, is it the hammer? Is it Aegis Fang? Whatever. She, like, leaps off, grabs it, and throws it back to the party, and then falls, falls, to assumedly her death, until later that chapter when we find out the plane is, an, is really a Mobius strip, and she falls back towards the party from the top. She's like, hey, guys, how's it going? Um, and she gets better. And then at the end of uh, Legacy, I get th th this... The next four books, the uh, Legacy of the Drow collection, I get all the names mixed up because I just I know nothing about them uh, until now since I'm reading them, obviously. Um, at the end of that, we get Artemis and Trary like smacking into the side of a mountain and then fall, fall, falling, presumably, to his death. Uh, except that I'm like five chapters into uh, Starless Night and there's already a nameless character who I'm assuming is in, is in Trary. Um, so, yeah. So my assumption is that scene in Lord of the Rings where, uh, uh, what's his name, Gandalf, like, falls, you know, supposedly to his death, and then he comes back later and he's fine, and he's like, no, 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 that chasm, not as big as you'd think. Um, I guess that must have really had an impact on Salvatore, or else Salvatore is scared to death of falling, but he's also scared to death of actually, like, killing off any of his characters, so he incorporates both of those fears into his writing. I don't know. It, it's getting old. Like, I, I remember um, a couple of years back, I actually just randomly decided, you know, that Lone Drow tri or Hunter's Blades trilogy, um, you know, that seems separated enough from this giant Legend of Drizzt thing. I'll give it a shot and see what it's like. And I remembered the Brunor was in it. So Brunor's death at the end of uh, Streams of Silver just meant nothing to me because I knew he was going to be back. And, um, I mean, to be fair, he totally sets that up in a lot of ways, so I, I'm not saying they're all complete cop-outs, but, um... Oh, and, and at the end of, uh, at the, at the end of, um, Legacy, Wolfgar gets, like, an avalanche, uh, thrown on top of him, so I have the slightest bit of hope that he might actually be dead, because he didn't fall to his death, but I'm gonna guess he's back later, uh... In fact, I've, I've read a couple of plot synopses that definitely mention him, so I'm sure he's back. Um, it's, it's one of those things where, like, I don't consider this any sort of huge spoiler alert, because, I mean, if you hop on Amazon and just read even the very basic sort of plot synopses, you're gonna, you're gonna find that the characters are there, even, I mean, like, I don't know how Wolfgar comes back, or how Entreri survived his, like, poisoned fall. <laughs> And all sorts of that stuff, but it's, you know, I don't think it's a big deal talking about the fact that it does happen, so, uh, let's see, so Halfling's Gem, Halfling's Gem is, is kind of, uh, the entire plot is Entreri gets Regis, he, he gets him, I think he gets him at the end of Streams of Silver, and he takes him back to, uh, Kalimport, where Pasha Pook has, is, is waiting upon him, and he's actually sent Entreri out to, to get him, and that's kind of what, uh, subplot through the first three books is. So it's him going back there, and it's uh, Drizzt and um, 
Wolfgar following him, trying to get him back. And it, it's it's in many ways kind of a road trip story. It's it's a lot of like, uh, you know, hey, I get the feeling with a lot of these earlier novels, it was them throwing out ideas for uh, players, you know, like or the or DMs, like here's how you can do this, here's how you could run this. So like, um, you know, for instance, here's how you could have a halfling in the party who's not really a fighter. You know, here's how you could uh, get a magic item into the party, even though your guys are in the middle of nowhere. Da -da 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 -da. Things like that. So. Um, it really kind of felt like, here's how to do a traveling adventure, here's how to do uh, encounters in cities, da 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 da, -da. Um, What I thought was odd is, like, at one point they go through the desert, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool, we're going to get to see some desert encounters. And then the next chapter is like, they finally arrived past the desert. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, whatever. Th this has some, like, promising little bits that never seem to go anywhere, like Rassiter and the uh, Ratman. I found interesting, but it, it's just kind of there as flavor. It doesn't really go anywhere. I found that what I do with Salvatore's books now, like I've perfected my method of skimming, which is uh, read maybe the first chapter or two in depth because they're going to set everything up. Then after that, just read uh, a direct dialogue. Read it as if it's a stage play and ignore everything else because basically any sort of subtext or irony in the dialogue itself is obvious and most of the text beyond that is just him pointing it out to people who don't get it so uh so far this has served me really well and the books read incredibly fast so if, if you're not really into it but you're like well i you know if you're like me you're like i feel beholden to read Driz because there's eight thousand books of them that's how i totally recommend doing it um also legacy went incredibly fast well i'll get to that in a second as to why so the Halfling's Gem, my big problem with it, beyond the fact that the people I found most interesting really aren't dealt with much, is, uh, and, and this is always a difficulty whenever you make a villain, because you kind of have two choices in, in fiction, especially genre fiction like this with a villain. You've either got to go like somebody who's, you know, absolutely batshit insane uh, to the point that they're like psychopathic, um... And, and this also includes, like, the dark, evil Lord Rising, that sort of thing. Like, just, so that they're just, just evil. Um, and then you, I, I guess maybe you could subdivide it into three. The other way to go is they're essentially just somebody doing their job. Um, it just happens to be a job that is less moral than the heroes. Um, and then kind of on that same vein as somebody who's been broken. Uh, you've got those three sort of paths to go. I mean, there's not a lot of leeway in there. Unless you, uh, you know, you pull some tricks like Paul Kemp did, where uh, th th there is no, like, good ground, you know? It's all moral shades of gray, and even your heroes are evil, or close to evil, and da 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 da, -da. But uh, that's kind of bringing up a whole other section. But when you're doing something like a Driz novel, you really only have those choices. Pasha Pook, it really seemed like he was trying to do this kind of like, well, it's just his job, and he's trying to do his job well, and, you know, he's not an unlikable guy. My problem with it is, through the book, I'm like, God, you know, Regis is my favorite character out of our main group of people, because I, I love halflings, because I'm crazy. Um, and Regis is even much closer to, like, a kinder than a halfling, which is the way that I prefer to play halflings and the way the halflings I prefer to read about. So, you know, Regis, my favorite character, yet from the halflings, Jim, what I came away with was I'm on Pasha Pook's side. Uh, he seems totally in the right to be wanting to kill Regis at this point or to torture him to death or whatever. I mean, Regis was a dick. He stole something of his and ran away. He stole something really valuable and ran away. I mean, I'm sorry, but, you know, I don't care if Pasha Pook is, like, head of the Thieves' Guild or whatever. Um, you're in the Thieves' Guild, you know? Like, come on, get over it. Uh, so that seemed a really big problem. The fact that at the end when they rescue Regis, I'm like, damn it. Also, Pasha Pook is a cat lover, which is really the only thing that I care about about Driz. And I'm like, well, he's a cat lover, so I like him for that. You know, of course, they get him back, and they win, and everything's happy. And then, like, the epilogue, it's weird, because so much happens in the epilogue. I guess probably uh, he was kind of like, well, I'm probably going to get a sequel, but just in case, I'll, I'll leave it kind of a, you know... Uh, so the ending is, like, they're planning Wolfgar and Caddy Bree's wedding. 
And Regis comes back and it's like, oh, he must have screwed the pooch down in Kalimpur. Ha 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 ha. Then the next book starts a legacy and it's really odd because essentially the entire book takes place within that epilogue. And there are just some weird things in here. Like, for instance, Regis is back, but it's not really Regis. It's actually Entreri wearing a mask, <laughs> which there's this magical mask that's introduced in, I think, Streams of Silver that is so like the Mission Impossible masks. Like, they, they can do anything, you know? Like, uh, that got so annoying, like, uh, somewhere in Mission Impossible 2, where it was like, at any point, you're like, well, this could just be somebody else in a mask. Like, I don't care anymore. Yeah, so anyway, Entreri is back because he wants to fight Drizzt, and it's this whole, you know, they're shadow versions of each other, and they have to fight. And I'm like, okay, that could be interesting, but essentially the entire rest of the novel is them fighting. There's really not much else to it than that. It's like Mithril Hall, which, you know, they're finally back to and taken care of, and da 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 and that's where the wedding's gonna be. It's being invaded by the drow because... Oh, man, I don't know. It all ties into Jerlaxle, I think is how you pronounce that. And he's probably by far my... He's definitely by far my favorite drow character, and he's quickly becoming my favorite character just because he dresses weird, and he's like, God, you bitches are boring. And I'm like, that is so interesting. <laughs> As a... I mean, it's like it's not, it's not like he's scared, and it's not like he hates them. He's just bored of them because it's the same thing over and over again. And I'm like... That's what I want to read, you know? Um, and it seems like he's got a bigger part as time goes on. But yeah, so it's mostly Drow in league with Entreri trying to take over Mithril Hall. And it's just this long-running fight between, on one side, uh, Drizzt and, uh, and Entreri, and on the other side, the Drow and uh, Brunor and Wolfgar and Cadbury and uh, some other dwarves, because, oh my god... Does Salvatore love his dwarves? Let me tell you right now, dwarves, my least favorite thing in almost any fantasy setting, definitely Forgotten Realms. Although, one of the books that I hope to talk about pretty soon, because it, it covers a huge span of time here, and I don't know when to get to it, but I, I've, I've got close to my 15 minutes now, so I'm going to stop talking here, so I won't talk about it here. Uh, but one of the books that I'm getting to soon actually approaches dwarves in a way that I loved. One of the many reasons that this book totally blew me away I'll get into talking to it about detail. I'll get into talking about it in detail later, but just so you know, it's Whisper of Waves by Philip Athens that I'm talking about. Um, it's kind of the book that really made me decide to start reading this entire uh, um, set of Realms books as a whole to see how it tied together, mostly because he was the editor for a long time. So I'm like, God, if he's this smart, I want to see what his editing did. Uh, though I wish I knew who was editing what at what time, because I don't, <laughs> and I can't find that information online, so I'm a little confused. Anyway, uh, really close to my 15 minutes, so I'll shut up, but uh, thanks for listening. This is Realms Remembered. Let me know what you think. Oh, uh, you know, just really quickly about Legacy. They fight, 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 fight. Wolfgar supposedly dies. The end. I mean, that's it. That's the entire book. There's nothing more to it than that that, that I could glean. Um, so we'll see if anything happens in Starless Night. All right, catch you later. Thanks for listening.